Hello and welcome back to another episode of LMS Cast. For those of you listening uh, to the to the podcast here, we actually ran this live on Molly Mahoney's Facebook page for pre- prepared performers. And uh, it's for those of you listening in the live audience right now. Thanks so much for coming. This is going to be an awesome conversation. We're going to get into Facebook topics, Messenger bot topics. Uh, selling without being a weirdo topics, teaching online. And Molly and I realized we had a little common thread in our history we're going to get into uh, with a little bit of story time. But first, Molly, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Mm. I am so stoked that you were up for the crazy ride that I decided to throw at you with going live. This is going to be so much fun. Yeah. Well, let's let's get into your history a little bit. Um, there's something going on in your past from the cruise industry. And uh, I have a history in the cruise industry. Before I got heavy into technology, I actually um, used to, this, is, this may sound kind of wild to those of you who haven't heard it before, but uh, for almost a decade, uh, I managed a helicopter supported dog sled tour business on a glacier in Alaska uh, for almost a decade. And uh, the, the main driver of that business was the cruise ships that would come into Juneau, Alaska. <laughs> And uh, people would fly up in the helicopters to our, uh, our camp on the ice field, and we would take them on sled dog rides. Um, so before I got into online courses and technology and membership sites and all these things, I was a, a big outdoor guy. I still am. But for a long time, I made my living uh, basically in the ecotourism business fueled by the cruise industry. So what? Okay, wait. Can you go back and just say that again? Like that actual title of what you did, helicopter, like the whole thing all the way through. What was that? I managed a helicopter supported sled dog tour business. So I was on a glacier with uh, a couple hundred sled dogs, uh, a bunch of people. And uh, the owner of that business who became a good friend and mentor was a Iditarod sled dog racer. And I used to run some sled dog uh, races and help him train in the wintertime. I, that's what I did before I got into uh, the online business and the so- software business. But that's Which my is backup. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> so I was actually a performer on cruise ships. And the one place that I didn't go, like I've been so many places all over this crazy world. And one place that I've never been is Alaska. So we should, oh my gosh. And we've been talking about planning a prepared performer cruise recently for like course creators and business owners who are using Facebook Live. We should plan one. I was thinking Caribbean, but maybe we should do it in Alaska. Yeah, Alaska's pretty amazing. <laughs> Super cool. So I was actually a musical theater performer for most of my life. And then um, I had a job for six months on a cruise ship as a singer. And it was awesome. We ended with a transatlantic cruise. I stayed on for the last two weeks to do the transatlantic and got to see so many amazing places. And I have really good friends from all over the world now. And learned how to live in a little tiny room underneath the ground for six months, which was kind of crazy, <laughs> but it taught me a lot. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's fun times. Well, tell us, like going from being a performer to, to being a, the prepared performer presence online, can you tell us that story, just like the evolution to what you are today? Yeah, so I started performing when I was eight years old. I On a vacuum kid. cleaner, I saw, right? Oh, I did. That was even before. Good job. Yeah, so <laughs> okay. my my about page is so fun. My friend Pia did my new website, and it does say that. When I was three years old, I started performing, singing into a vacuum cleaner. But I went to school for theater and dance, and one of the main things when I graduated and I moved to New York, one of the main things that I was missing was actually training and how to actually have a job and how to have a career and actually make a living and not be a quote unquote starving artist. So I was lucky to have several friends and met lots of people who were able to help guide me in that. But I was like, man, what a bummer that other performers are thrown into this insanity where really you're running a business. And I am, I mean, we're, we're taught that business is bad. Like getting a business degree is a bad thing that you're selling out. But I have a firm belief that if you can embrace those business strategies, you're actually going to have a bigger ability to affect the world in a deeper way. Right. Very cool. So I, uh, yeah. So after I was on tour with Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, the Broadway musical kind of random, but uh, with, a, with a flying car, similar to with 
you know, dogs that on a sled, I suppose. We actually had nine dogs on our tour also. Awesome. Have you seen Chitty Chitty Bang Bang? I have not, but I just saw Annie at a local <laughs> performance and there was a dog in it. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, you never know. So there's actually just one scene in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang where they're, they have these candies that whistle they're called toot sweets and when they whistle the candies all these dogs run on stage so nine dogs toured with us for that one scene which was crazy but um but yeah so while I did that my husband and I got engaged and we decided to move back to California from New York to um raise kids and I launched a business my goal was to have a knitting slash dance studio slash wine bar <laughs> so that sounds like a, a definitely follow your passion kind of direction right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like what am I good at what do I love and how can I make a business out of it um how'd that work out has, I, well I worked at two different studios and I realized and I worked at a yarn store also and realized I do not want a brick and mortar like yeah no thank you so um it was going to be called kick in knit which would have been awesome and clever but um I just decided to take my business online so I built a really awesome a full vocal coaching business here in Orange County. But I was working at literally at one point I had 10 different jobs. <clears throat> like, I don't know if you ever have been in that place. I call it busy balls. Hashtag yeah. busy balls. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's intense. Like when you're just, you know, from one thing to the next and very little sleep and lots of, you know, trying to switch gears from one to the next. Yeah. It's crazy. And it's hard, like when you said it's a passion based business, it's, easy to find yourself in that place because you love what you do and you just think like I'm going to hustle and I'm going to get there but then you just create more and more busy balls and then you get sick and you know you don't have time with your kids and all that so the body does I, uh revolt eventually that's what I find even if you're following your passion and you have your your foot the pedal to the metal uh eventually the body's like hey this isn't sustainable got to got to slow down <laughs> yeah and I'd like to say that like I learned that but it happens again. It's like, for yeah. me, I don't know if it's a struggle for you. I don't know if you figured that out. And I, I'm working on it. I'm a lot better. But um, that self-care piece is so important, you know? It's a big deal. It's easy to, for that to get uh, run away. For me personally, uh, I've just have to develop habits and like boundaries and, you know, like yeah. I have morning routine and I've definitely had work-life balance issues, but I, I'm constantly working on it. And I'm really, I, you know, we talked about running sled dogs in Alaska. I'm uh, about seven years into my entrepreneur journey or six years or whatever. And I would say it really took me five years to get remotely, uh, stable. You know what I mean? Like, it feels so good because yeah. this is the fifth year of having my business. Okay. <laughs> okay so I'm right at the right spot. <laughs> well, I always heard on, on podcasts and stuff, it, it'll take you three years to figure it out, but you know what? It actually took me five. <laughs> so uh maybe i'm below average but uh i don't know <laughs> i love it so yeah. i actually i launched this course and if michael if you're still watching i um i watched this course that launched this course i used um zippy courses and i wish i had known you guys existed at that point but i i created all of this um all of this training material ahead of time I launched a pilot program. It was called Prepared Performer Profits, and it was teaching starving artists how to build a business using their creative talents. So the pilot went really well. I had 15 people. They were seeing awesome results, and I had amazing testimonials and feedback. And then I went like hardcore selling this course that I had already created. And guess what happened? Crickets. <laughs> zero sales like actually zero well i was listening and when i heard starving artists is the tar target market that was like uh i mean i get it yeah. i know they need help but like can they can they pay for it will they pay for yeah. it no, they won't just so yeah. you know <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> which how many coaches and how many courses was i in where they were like molly this is really valuable but i don't think people are actually going to buy it and i was like yes they will <laughs> like, yeah they didn't hashtag fyi <laughs> yeah uh, that's a good lesson. That's a good lesson. I mean, or maybe it's just yeah. the wrong product. I mean, maybe like a book that's $20 or something maybe, but like, I don't know how much your course or your program was, but. Um. So the, the pilot was 197 and I had reached out to people individually at that point to sell it. And then the full blown course was 497. Yeah. Which was pretty, I mean, for what they were getting, it was like crazy. And I heard, I was listening to a podcast that you had done with Joseph. Um, uh, the Scrivener coach, Joseph Michael. Yeah. 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 I loved all the discussion about pricing in that one. Um, 
but uh, but yeah, so what I realized is that if, even if it was for technically for starving artists, even if I had called it something differently, like I was like, cure the starving artist syndrome. <laughs> Talk about like reinforcing the scarcity mindset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that's how we learn. Thing. That's how we learn. Right. Yeah. So what I did in that, like, I literally felt like I was having a panic attack. My, ch I mean, I don't know if I really cried a lot, but I have never felt that feeling of like, I can't breathe because what is actually happening right now. And um, so I got with my a coach that I was working at the time, Amy Bradbury. Do you know her? Danny I Chad? don't. Is it is she related to Danny any at all? Or um, any of his stuff? I don't know, but I was in Danny's course. So actually this story is featured. I didn't even realize it, but it's featured in Danny's recent, or his newest edition of his book. Okay. Um, yeah. So Andy was my, co my coach with Danny and he helped me with this too. But I, um, and no matter how many of them told me not to do the starving artist thing, I was like fully committed. <laughs> <Yeah>. and, um, <laughs> but the feedback I had gotten from Danny's group and from a lot of other people is that my live videos were doing really well and Facebook Live had just come out. So we shifted everything. I took all of the training that I had in that course and I wrote it into a spreadsheet and I decided to flip it and teach business owners how to perform instead of performers how to have a business. Oh, that's a really interesting way of a pivot we would call that in the startup world it's a very yeah. uh some people like technically in the startup community you would call that kind of an audience or offer pivot but that's um that's a really fascinating way to look at that yeah i like flipped it yeah. <laughs> literally <laughs> but it was the same material basically i just added a little more there's there's one module in my course about performing and um and then the rest of it is business strategy because if you're planning on using facebook live to have a business and you don't have that stuff in place, it's not going to work. So, um, so is that where, is that where you really got your wings with, um, when you, after you made that pivot that the, it started, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel, the hole got bigger, right? The, the, yeah. 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 And now it's like this giant, <laughs> the grand Canyon. It's amazing. So yeah. I, I actually, what I did is I taught the whole course in a Facebook group. So I went live every day for 30 days and I sold it before I did that. So was it, uh, yeah, let's, let's hear about that particular offer of, was that, were you considering that a pilot, like a relaunch in yeah. a Facebook group, or this is just a new format for delivering a course? Well, when I started it, my plan was to do it as a pilot. And then the second month, the first month went really well. I think I did, um, I sold the course, which my, and now the program is like fully sussed out. There's so many new things in it and it's, it, the course sells for 997. Do you still but, run it through Facebook? Or yes. Okay. Tell us about the, that. Like, how does that work? How do you do a course on, in Facebook, like private group or just walk us through the end to end from the sale after the sales page, what happens? Yeah. So after the sales page, they get a thank you page that says like, welcome, you know, we're so glad you're here, blah, blah, blah. And click this link to join the group. And then I've actually moved it around a couple of times, but everyone has told me in my community, cause we're doing Facebook live anyway, that they really love having the content in that Facebook group. So, um, what I did, and this is something I made up and it, it can be a little weird at first, but once people get it, it's awesome. So I did those 30 videos and I actually did that for three months. And halfway through the third month, I was like, this is ridiculous. Oh, you I'm mean you would run it, you would run it live, the same curriculum, probably slightly improved each time, but go through it yeah. again and again, right? Yeah, until I got all the feedback and then everyone was giving their, because they all had homework for every, every lesson that I taught and they were putting it in the comments below the video. Amazing, yeah. It was like, <laughs> awesome. So everybody yeah. sees it. There, there's like not a competition, but like a, an accountability feel and like this excitement about it. Quick question, because I'm a details guy, at least about some things. Are, is this lifetime access to the Facebook group or is it, are they removed after 30 days? Like it's just a set journey or is it? Yeah, is so it, now it's lifetime access. It was at first, it was going to be just one month and then I did it for six months, but then trying to pull people out and keep track of that was honestly for me just way too much of a headache. And yeah. I know you mentioned that a lot of people in this community um, launch courses and then have coaching. So yeah. having that relationship where I'm able to still continue to support them in the Facebook group is so much better for, for being able to welcome people as private clients as well. Okay. Rather than them out, you know? Gotcha. Um, so then so I went so, through. So you were doing it live and you were like, yeah, you did it three times like, and then what? This is crazy. So at first I put it, all of the live videos into a file within the group. And I, um, I, I had my assistant at the time take- Like video files that people could download? Is that what you mean? No, I did it. I, I shared the link, the URL from the video, from the live video in a document within the Facebook group. So they could oh, just gotcha. click on it. Yeah. But it always, 
like I have them all on YouTube in case anything happens. And I had put them into a, a, a course thing also, which I think that's important because we don't own Facebook, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so it'd be cool to have, if anyone in your audience does this, like they, I think your plugin would still be an amazing way to have it standard and download it and have it there so that they can still access it that way. But there's a Facebook um, version too, maybe or something. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And then now what I've done is totally different. I actually, I did, because there's no way to do video albums on Facebook, right? right? So I did a photo album with the title of each video training in order. And then I took the link for my favorite out of the thir- three months. I took the best of all of those. And I put the link in the description of the video and in, I mean, in the description of the photo. So Beautiful. if they see the title, then they click on that link. And then they're back into that conversation that people were having in June. Wow. So if, for those of you, if you kind of got lost a little bit there, I, what Molly basically did is she hacked the structure of a photo album to, yeah. to organize and create a curriculum that kind of makes sense using the way Facebook works. That's really amazing. That, that's and then cool. I also have, if people want to opt in, they can get a 30 day email sequence. So every day for 30 days, they're sent a link to the video in the Facebook group. With I think a little- this is- I think it's really fascinating because I mean, lots of people have their platform preference. They may want yeah. to just stay on Facebook or maybe it's their email inbox and like, Hey, just hit me up and may, bring, you can bring me back to Facebook if you want, but I need that email yeah. or, uh, or I have a habit and I want to be on your site. Like it's, it's not necessarily one way is better than the other. And people, you know, have different preferences and workflows and notification systems. So, yeah, it's, so uh, we're it's cool. actually, now I have, I've like built out a team. And so we're working on, we're writing up um, written tutorials to accompany each video. There's several written tutorials in there, but not for every single one. So we're working on that now. And then I'm also going to offer them the opportunity to have a messenger reminder. So we'll have a sequence listed out within messenger in Facebook messenger that will send them a remi- reminder every day for 30 days if they want. Let's get, let's get into that piece a little bit um like facebook messenger bots are a thing Uh, a lot of people don't really know what they are um what is (laughs) what is like how do you describe it and how do you use it so it's basically like um setting up an autoresponder for your facebook messenger so if you have mailchimp or convert kit or you know any of these other um infusion soft it's doing that via facebook messenger So it works exactly the same. You can have a landing page and people can opt in. You can have the cool, there's, so they have these things called growth tools in the the system that I use. And it's basically just like having a myriad of ways that they can opt in. And then they're subscribed to your Facebook messenger on your business page. It only works on your business page. And then you can set up sequences. You can set up, you can tag people the same way that you would in an email service provider. And, um, and it's a different platform, right? So you want to treat it in a different way. It's more fun. It's really short messages. Um, you have to follow the Facebook terms of service. So you're not allowed to put an actual payment link in the message. It's against the rules, but you can get creative with that. Um, yeah. And it's completely transformed my business, like out of control. How do you get, like, what is, like, in terms of getting people into that, into a Facebook or Facebook flow or whatever, are you getting that opt-in like on Facebook or on your website or both? Both. So I actually, I've added, they have a little pop-up that you can do. It's a WordPress plugin. Um, they have a pop-up. Is it a WordPress? You know what? I think it's just code that you enter into the header. So I think it works with any website actually. Okay. Um, and it, that has converted better for me than any other pop-up I've added in the past. And it's just a slider. So it doesn't cover up the whole screen. It's not really obtrusive. It's fun. And the cool thing is they don't have to enter any information. They just click because most people are already logged in. They're already Facebook. logged in. Yeah. Which is one of the beautiful parts about it. And then the other beautiful part is that the, uh, the open rates, like people read Facebook messages like a lot, <laughs> like most yeah. of them. So. Yeah, so my open rates are, are like averaging and I have about 3000 people subscribed now and my open rates are anywhere from like 60% on the low rate to 90, 97%, 96%, which is crazy. And then yeah. the click through rates are even more insane. So um, it's super cool. And then my favorite way to get people, and I don't know if you've played with this, but my favorite pe- way to get people subscribed and to offer them major value is... Um, I use it with Facebook Live. So what I'll do is I pre-schedule a live video 
Are you using uh, Be Live or just using yeah. a Facebook event or what? Yeah, I use Be Live. Okay. Um, are you? Have you played with Be Live at all? Yeah, we just did a big uh, launch party with Face uh, with Be Live on our Facebook page. We just for new product private areas that we just released. Awesome. So it be, it's for people who don't know, it's BeLive TV. That's where you can go to. Um, register. They have a free version and then you can also upgrade to do fancier things with the paid version. But I don't know if you know this, but I actually uh, work with the company. So I have my own show on their channel. Cool. Which is super cool. So every other Wednesday I'm there teaching confidence tips for them as well, which is really fun. And um, I love that BeLive allows the comments to pop up on your screen. So you're really building more of a relationship with your audience. Right. Have you played with that? I haven't. I have. Well, yeah, you, you can, uh, you can press it. I've just done it like twice. So I'm not that I'm not a power user, but yeah, the, the comment in their face comes up and, uh, I was doing it with side by side with somebody else on my, on my oh, yeah. team. And it was, it was really cool. They had three, three formats, like uh, broadcast, ask me anything or in something else. It was, yeah, it was, but it was easy to use, super easy to use. And you can add lower thirds really easily. You can add, like you could even have half of your screen covered with an image. There's so many possibilities. And you can pre-schedule an agenda. So if you're worried about getting off topic, which so many people are when they're doing videos, um, you can have your agenda scheduled so that you can pull up everything that you want to share, like bullet points. And it'll write it on the bottom of your screen. Um, but you can pre-schedule the videos. So, and it's super easy to pre-schedule with BeLive. So I pre-schedule the video and then I go into this tool called many chat is that what you use i've been playing around with it i'm not using it live but i'm trying i'm teaching myself how to use it okay yeah so it's um some people think that i say m-i-n-i but it's my husband said i should say manny chat so that people okay. understand <laughs> yeah there you go um, yeah manny chat but um but yeah so then you can actually attach one of these growth tools to your video with a trigger keyword so you say while you're doing your video you say comment below with the word Sometimes I'll do like comment below with the words, kick my booty if you want to have some accountability in your life and I'll send you my favorite accountability tool. And so they comment below with that phrase and then it automatically messages them right away in Facebook Messenger. And then once they respond to that message, they are subscribed to your messenger. Very cool. And that's like basically like your email list, but on Facebook. So it's your, yeah. it's your messenger list. And just for the people that are kind of nervous, if somebody decides they want to opt out or unsubscribe from your messenger, how do they stop? Yeah. So you, all, I am so big about this. Like two things. One is you don't want to be a salesy weirdo. So you want to give people options. So even when I say like we're live doing this video right now, if you want to join us, I say, would you like to join us? I don't say come join us live because not everybody might want to. So I let them join live. I let them join the replay or I let them say no, thank you every time. And um, when people first subscribe, I always tell them that the only, it's super easy. If you don't want to get these messages anymore, we'll miss you, but just reply with the word stop and you'll be unsubscribed. So beautiful. Easy. Beautiful. So if somebody wants to kind of take Facebook live and messenger bots and stuff to the next level, what do you recommend? Like how do they get going for a course creator out there? That's like, this sounds interesting. What should I, what should I do first? If I want to head down this path? Yeah. So first you come hang out with me. I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, really it's like, I'm sure, and these are strategies that are so common in business, but so many people miss these things. Um, the first thing is you recognize what makes you a uniquely awesome human being because that confidence piece is huge. And no matter how fancy you are in business, um, those gremlins pop in and stop and will stop you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What, and what is, let, let me just go down a, a side path here. Uh, you've mentioned confidence and that's one of the things that you've, you've coached people on and stuff like that. What is, what is at the root of people not having confidence and what are some tips besides you mentioned like really step into who you are and be yourself, but like what, what other tips do you have around confidence? So that, that this, first of all, this is like the best thing that I was able to take from the world of performing into the world of business because I coached people who had Broadway credits, people who were like, you know, featured in such high level places where you would think that they're just going to walk in and know they can nail it. But their confidence is even less than the beginners sometimes because there's higher stakes involved. Right. Right. So, um, I developed these strategies on how to psych ourselves out basically <laughs> in order to feel more confident. So one of them, my favorite, and it's actually an exercise that you can't just think about, you have to really do it. And this exercise is called, the quesadilla of awesome. 
Okay. Okay. Tell me Someone more. Someone recently told me they don't eat cheese, but they can have a quesadilla of awesome too. It could be like a hummus quesadilla, which is the point of this. And the point is that everyone has something that makes them uniquely awesome as a human, even if it's just that you make an amazing quesadilla. Okay. So I, I have them list out five different things. And um, the five different things, I created an acronym, which is the word SAVE. However, I am dyslexic and don't spell very well. So I celebrate that fact so that my audience doesn't judge me for my typos. So the word save has two A's. Okay. So it's A-A-V-E. All right. <laughs> it's like reinforcing my quesadilla of awesome in my brand. But um, the, so it's your skills. So if you're, um, you know, good at, at dividing up the check when you go out to dinner with your friends, that would go in your quesadilla of awesome. Like your skill sets, the things that you're naturally gifted at, your appearance, because no matter who you are, and sometimes I think this is more of a female issue, but it's not because I have male clients who totally struggle with this. Um, when you come to the camera, I mean, like right now, we're on Zoom, right? But we're, our faces are right there, yeah. and it's like staring us back. So you have to find things in your appearance that you can celebrate and that you love. So your appearance, um, activities that you love. So like dog sledding is like clearly a part of your quesadilla of awesome, right? Okay. Yeah. And knowing that and hearing that I had done cruise ships like gave us that instant weird connection. Right. <laughs> right? We share something in our quesadilla of awesome. Yes. <laughs> Even though it's like one step removed, it's still yeah. totally something that we can talk about and pull our, our gremlins away. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then we start to have like our own natural energy comes out. And that's gotcha. what people want. So activities, so mine's like knitting, crocheting, dancing, swing dancing, um, having kids, like, like playing with my kids, living a life of an adventure. And then your values, which as much as you can celebrate that and really know what that is, that changes everything also. And then the last thing is things that you like to eat. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> we can all talk about food all day long. And I have a very strong relationship with Brussels sprouts. And I firmly believe that if you post a picture of Brussels sprouts on Facebook and just write Brussels sprouts with a question mark, you are going to get all sorts of engagement because people either love them or hate them. Okay. So, so you make a list of those things and then you find ways to infuse those things into your brand, into your videos. And you basically create a, a brand that is filled with the things that you love and then infuse your business into that so mm -hmm. that you're able, okay, that's like the first step. And then we kind of got off, but that's like the first thing to the confidence piece. And then finding ways to search out the quesadilla of awesome and others so that we're not so self-focused on our yeah. own stuff. That's really cool. That's some, some very good tips there. And I appreciate the <laughs> an acronym. <laughs> and I, I noticed that when I was looking at your website before this, I was like, oh, this is, this is uh, somebody who, who like really has a strong brand here. I get, and I'm like, getting, I'm getting the colors. The pictures are not like, they're very much like unique. Like, okay, this is somebody who has some opinions, who has clearly has a quesadilla of awesome. And then now yeah, that and some people see yeah. it and they're like, oh my gosh, this lady's crazy, which is totally fine. Like they can yeah. go somewhere else. Right. I want to work with the people that I love and the people that, that love that about me. And, um, right. Same thing for you. Like you want to work with the people who have the same sort of work ethic or the same sort of approach to the world. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And I could see like looking at your site too, there was the fun side, but then there was all this like seriously like skills. Like I was somewhere I was on, I was somewhere and I saw the Facebook messenger bot come up and I saw some really well-written copy and I'm like, Oh, this is polished. This is this is really good <laughs> stuff here. And uh, <laughs> um, thank you. But that's what I tell people uh, is you know yeah you may also be doing a vegan cooking class or a Brussels sprout Brussels sprout seven ways class. But there's there's only one you. So yeah. uh, there's always an opportunity for differentiation. And uh, totally. and if you can get outside yourself, like you're saying, and really. Don't get so mirror fo looking in the mirror focused. Um, you know, you can really connect with your students and your customers. So, and then like back to the beginning question, which was like about how to use Facebook Live. So from there, if you can, after you work on your own quesadilla of awesome and bring it into your brand and all that, if you can uh, really identify not, and I don't, I'm not sure how you guys teach about this because I, but I would love to know your thoughts. But you know, there's this idea of having a target market or an, a niche or whatever, but 
the easiest way for me to help people to do this and the easiest way for me to be really specific in my videos is to pick one singular person that I'm speaking to who is a client that I have worked with that I love or who is a, a person that I know would be eager to pay for my services or has the potential to pay for my services and also has something that is like awesome that I would love to support them in and dive into the problems that they're experiencing. So make sure when you do videos on your business page, you're really solving that specific problem for that one singular person. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. I mean, we're mostly on the software side in terms of at Lift Your LMS in terms of, um, we don't, we don't necessarily teach as much on like how to, uh, the, the business side of courses. We're more trying to solve yeah. the technology problems, but, um, that makes total sense in terms of, uh, you know, really getting into the customer avatar. I do that like as a software entrepreneur, if I'm writing an email, the one of the last things I do before I hit send, and actually it usually happens many, many times, is I read it, but I read out loud just to hear how it lands. And I, I insert the name, the first name of, you know, a customer that pops into my head. And, yeah. and I'm really trying to internalize like how would it, if I was on the receiving end of this and I was this great person that I love doing business with and serving, how would this email land? So I, that's how I, I do it. I'm going to start doing that. I love yeah. it so yeah. much. That's yeah. so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, and that's like, so sometimes people see things like even an email service provider or when people see um, the bots, right? They're like, ah, that's going to pull me away from being human. But no, like what you just described is exactly how you ensure that you can take that human one-on-one -on -one connection and multiply it so that you can you can, like for me, I can spread more joy. I can help people to really unlock the things that are unique about them. And they can, even when they walk into the grocery store, they're going to be more confident and more, you know, on top of things and feel more empowered and just make the world a better place because I'm having that one-on-one -on -one relationship with literally thousands or hundreds or millions of people, you know? Yeah, we, we always, we've said over the years, one of the things we try to do with technology, teaching technology is... Uh, scale the human touch with robotics. It doesn't mean that you're not being human if you use an autoresponder or if you use something like our private areas add-on to set up some sequence of private pages that are going to be created for each of your coaching clients. But you're leveraging technology, but you still like you know, a, a lot of human intention goes into it. And perhaps mm -hmm. some of that content is actually like live and customized and everything like that. So it's okay to leverage tools, technology tools. Yeah. And it's like a, a huge disservice to your audience if you're not, because, you know, I, I, in my, uh, when I speak from stages or in my masterclass that I do a couple times a month, I always say, you know, there is something that's better than Facebook live. And then my favorite is my, the reaction that I got from my friend, Ann Bennett, who's a branding specialist. And she was like at a live event and she went and like got all crazy to write this thing down because she knows that I love Facebook live. And, um, and I said, speaking to an actual human being like in person having a real conversation but it is impossible to be able to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation with as many people as who need you right so yeah Facebook lives the next best thing creating a course for them so that they can engage and feel that that intention whether it comes through an email or a template that you've written if you can make it you and you can do like you did pull yourself out and and read it or deliver it as if you're really speaking to that person it changes things. Yeah. And there's tools that you can scale. Like uh, we're using a, something called zoom to record this private conversation, but we could be doing a webinar with like, um, you know, a bunch of people here and taking live questions. So you can still get the best of both worlds uh, out there. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit more about sales without being a weirdo. That's kind okay. of, one of the, one of your things like uh, course creators, especially if they don't have a background and in, in business or sales or internet marketing, uh, they're, they're more starting from the point of I'm an expert in X and I want to teach online, potentially access the worldwide market in a better way. Um, how, how do you coach people on sales? So this is one of my favorite things to talk about. And it's one of my favorite things to talk about because I will admit I have been a salesy weirdo in the past. And so what would an example of you being a salesy weirdo in the past? Uh, okay, this is the perfect one. And my sister called me out on it. So I used to be 
you know, now I'm, I only have my coaching business. That's all I focus on. But I used to be part of a direct sales company. I had a team of about 200 people and direct sales companies get such a bad rap because they are taught to be salesy weirdos basically is what I have realized. Are you talking about like MLM, multi-level marketing type stuff? Yeah. Okay. And, um, and actually Nicole who connected us and is watching right now, she called me out on this recently and she was like, Molly, sometimes you, <laughs> um, you like hide the fact that you have lots of people in your audience who are in direct sales and that you have a connection to them. And so Nicole, I am not hiding this anymore. I am just calling it like it is, which is people get put off. They're, they're turned off to those types of companies because so much of the strategies that are written in books or taught from the companies are salesy weirdo tactics. So it's like reach out to all your friends and offer them to join your team. Like that's, you're yeah. not even talking. <laughs> Have a Tupperware party. Right. Yeah. Which is like, okay. And I, I mean, we searched out Tupperware when it came to getting those cups for our kids. We tried every other fancy cup, but those cups from Tupperware were amazing for us. However, what I did when I sold makeup, like, and it came from a place of passion and it came from a place of like really loving this product. But I got so excited about it that I would literally just like all day long post pictures of, you know, myself with only one eye done and show the difference. And my <laughs> messaged me and she was like, and I had a coaching business at that time too. So it was great for performers and all that. And I did really, like I did really well with that. But my sister messaged me and she was like, Molly, more children, less mascara. <laughs> In my face. post. So I had to take a step back and be like, you can't just add a bunch of people into a Facebook group and then send them a link to buy your stuff. Yeah. Cause that would be a salesy weirdo. <laughs> yeah. Another one that I see a, a bit is um, just trying to execute sales tactics without having a relationship. Uh, and a classic example, it is a great book uh, by Robert Cialdini called influence. And there's these seven okay. things that make, can make somebody influential. But if you were just to like read that book and implement tactics to create scarcity or urgency, like it's not, I mean, it's cool to like learn how that works and learn the human psychology and the behavior and how we're kind of wired to respond to these things. But you shouldn't just try to be like, all right, I got that. Now I need to write some sales copy that exploits those human uh, traits. <laughs> and actually one way that I often will explain it when it comes to a webinar or when it comes to doing a video where you're in, um, your intention, your, your objective is to make a sale. And this actually, I heard from Amy Porterfield about her web. This is something she said about her webinars. And I think it is so brilliant. It's that there's a difference between your objective and your intention. Tell me more. So when you do a video, like let's, I, and I always love to out myself. So okay. oh, well, let's, like, <laughs> I, I, let's like talk about this the podcast interviews. Right. Okay. So, and I like, I am crazy busy right now. I have so, like so much happening. However, I've decided that I'm going to make an intention to connect with more people who are sharing information with the world via podcasts, right? So my, inten my intention is I know that by sharing the information that I'm sharing with you today, with your audience today, that more people are going to feel confident. Like we could end right now and I'd be like stoked because I know at least one person from your audience is going to go into even like a PTA meeting and have a better relationship with the people that they're connecting with because they're going to feel more confident. Yeah. Right? What a gift. I mean, giving out the case of awesome or whatever, somebody's listening and they're real, it's going to make a real impact. I know it is. Yeah. And, and underneath it, like my, I have these different versions of whys. I have a three part why. And one of the parts of the why in my business is a global why. Right. And so my global why is to help more people have more joy, just like straight up. So I know the strategies that I teach about Facebook live actually help people to have more joy in their life in general, which is super cool. So that's my intention. I show up here, like, I think you do cool things. I've seen what you're doing. I'm excited to talk to you as a human being and like connect with you and then also have that joy spreading effect go through the world. Right. right? However, business wise, you also want to have some sort of strategy or objective, right? So like when you ask, <laughs> let's like fully out myself. When you say like, what's the first step to learning how to do Facebook live? I'm going to mention like, you know, oh, I have this free Facebook group, which you could come, you know, if people want to join me in the Facebook group, I'm offering value all the time. Or if you want a video content planner, it makes it super easy to be able to download and get, get, um, all of these strategies. Now with that video content planner, you're going to get like killer value for free. And so that's my intention is for you to like feel confident and put good non-salesy weirdo content out there 
But my objective is that eventually down the line, you will like connect with me. And then if it's something that you um, enjoy or you realize it would help you in your business, then yeah, you'll jump into my programs. Like that would be awesome. And that would be my business objective down the line. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And I, uh, you know, I'm just trying to out myself here too. Like <laughs> I love, it does me a huge service to provide all kinds of free value to the course building audience that is listening to this. And you're helping me do that. This is, these are you, I did not know about the quesadilla of awesome before today. <laughs> and not only are you helping all my people, you're, you're helping me. So it's, yeah. and, and it all, it all works out, you know, and I don't, <clears throat> I, I have a software product around creating and selling courses. And some of the things we're talking about is, um, you know, it doesn't necessarily like directly me. We're not just talking about so the best software tools or whatever. We're talking about ideas and strategies for people who that can, that can help them. And I know in the long run that's going to work out and we're going to be seen as like a trusted resource and we care about more than just selling uh, software widgets. You know, we're like, I really yes. care about these things. I'm also a course creator myself. So I'm learning from you and in and, and, and what you're teaching here too. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and then also that actually ties into one of the strategies that I teach that for so many people, I think this is fear, but for many people, they're like, oh, Molly, that makes no sense. That won't work for my business. I see that it works for yours, but it won't work for mine. But I will tell you right now, this strategy that I'm going to share works for literally every single business, every single nonprofit, every single influencer that has an objective, which is to know your ideal client and then deliver non-product based solutions. Well, and what does that mean? <coughs> Excuse me. It is exactly what you talked about. So we are like delivering results, results in advance before asking for money. Is that what you mean? No, it's like, um, one example. Okay. Here's the example that I always give. So I know who my ideal client is and I know that they are busy, that they, like we talked about self-care in the very beginning yep. of this interview. So even just teaching about self-care has nothing to do really like tangibly with Facebook live. But if I teach people to drink more water and I, like I had a, I always mention this, but I had a client who did, um, and she actually was part of a direct sales company. She did a, a five day, water challenge on how to drink more water because it's something that all humans need, but she was really specific to the type of person that she was speaking to. And she brought in 300 leads. Oh, wow. On how to drink more water. <laughs> it's like stupid, but it's awesome because it, you're, what you're doing is you're removing yourself from your final objective of making sales and you're focusing on the person that you're serving and how you can help them. Yeah. Yeah, that's key. That's key. Like I know my customer base really well and there's all kinds. I probably spend more time just helping connect them with other people and other ideas. Uh, I spend a lot of time on the product and the technology tools, but I like helping them in any way I can. And yeah. there's a, you know, and they love it too. Like then they yeah. appreciate you and they trust you. And then if something goes wrong, like I bet this has never happened, but like technology is crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, I launched this whole program on how to a bot. It was a three hour bot training okay. and we, we crashed three times during the bot training okay. and like they got to play, but it literally shut down <laughs> because I've built this relationship with my audience and I am good at handling disasters. I didn't get anyone say that was horrible and I want my money back. Everybody was like, Oh my gosh, Molly, we love you. Thank you so much for working through that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's awesome. And I think that's part of that confidence piece too, when you're teaching or, um, you know, especially if you're kind of on a topic that's a little bit bleeding edge and, you know, tools start breaking or Facebook changes the, uh, uh, their terms of service and now you got to change your content. Like people will adapt with you because they know, because you're being you and you're not like talking in absolutes and you're being vulnerable and making mistakes as you go too. people really love that. Yes. It's authenticity. It's, I mean, it's almost cliche to be yourself or be authentic, but it really matters. It's like a whole currency of its own. I like, I wish there was a different word for authenticity because I feel like authentic has become such a buzzword. Yeah. But that's, I guess that's where the quesadilla of awesome comes in. <laughs> yeah. That's a, a, that is a new word with two A's. So <laughs> that's cool. Well, Molly Mahoney, ladies and gentlemen, where can people find out more about what, what you've got going on and what can they expect if they 
head on over there and check it out. Yeah, so I actually, I put together this whole little fun package just for your peeps. So um, I would love it if they wanted to go to that link. And when they go there, it will show them a, the video content planner. There'll be a little video saying how much fun this was because this was so much fun. And then um, you can get the video content planner. There's also access to my next upcoming live video masterclass where I really dive into like all the strategies to use when you're going live on Facebook and you want to really get those conversions and build that tribe of people who love you. And also a link to my free private Facebook group where we have all kinds of things are being discussed in there. We bring in guests to do, um, you know, we could actually, if you wanted to come in, we could bring you in as a guest, not to put you on the spot, but I'd love, I'd love to, to. You if you want to come. Yeah, yeah cool. I'd love to. Yeah. And um, we've had different software, you know, like um, all kinds of people in there who are offering advice and really juicy content within that private Facebook group. And then I do free Q and A's and stuff like that in there too. It's a great place to get your questions answered. So all you have to do is go to the prepared performer.com slash L M S. I thought we'd do it together. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. So, <laughs> so that's the link, everybody, the prepared performer slash L M S com slash L M S. And uh, head on over to the LMS Cast website. You'll see a link to that in the show notes as well. But uh, Molly, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your energy and the KCD of awesome with us and so much more. I really appreciate it. Yeah, this was such a blast.